Mm-hmm. Well, hi, Tim. Uh, thanks. Thanks for talking to me here. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd, I really don't know you personally, so I'd love to hear a little bit about um, about you and what you're doing these days. And, and uh, then I've got a few questions to ask you about your okay. permaculture experience. All right. Well, um, I guess I'll start with work. Um, because it gets in the way of what I really want to do. Um, so I have an indoor gardening store and organic uh, retail. So I sell a lot of organic fertilizers and soils, uh, pest control. I also do hydroponics and plant lighting. And um, I took some extra space in the warehouse of the store and I grow wheatgrass. So um, I grow that, I, I sell it to juice bars. And actually, mm-hmm. what's kind of cool, something that just happened was met somebody from the zoo, and in the winter time, they have trouble finding things for the animals to eat and to kind of uh, occupy themselves, you know, foraging and things. So I've been giving them my wheatgrass mats, and they're finding ways of using them for the the animals at the zoo, uh, just for nutrition sake, for giving them something to do. Um, so it's kind of in the experimental phases with that. So that's kind of interesting. Hoping maybe, uh, I don't know, I can get some promotion at the zoo or I, something. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, uh, you know, that's what I do professionally. That's my livelihood at the moment. Um, and then four years ago I purchased 12 acres of land. Uh, and I guess I should say my passion for growing food kind of came from, um, this business. Um, I, I was growing just small container plants. I didn't have much of a yard. And, um, so I started this store and then from there I started growing more and more food. I always just kind of had this flowers, not so much, mostly food. And so I had a guy that, uh, was selling some property. He let me use his property for the summer. And, you know, just to see if I wanted to be there, if it worked out for me. And um, it didn't, it was just too far away from my work. So Mm -hmm. I ended up buying 12 acres, about 15 minutes away from work. Um, And, uh, you know, it's kind of what led me to Midwest permaculture. You know, I'm I'm definitely a tree hugger. I am, uh, you know, I try to preserve the environment as much as I can. And it frustrates me that most of the population doesn't really care much and doesn't really want to take any kind of steps towards or being even inconvenienced to do the right thing. Um, but I'm trying to do it on my little piece of land and, uh, you know, trying to just build something sustainable. Um, you know, I started off growing a lot of tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, you know, and And then you try to sell it and people are just beating you up on the price, you know, and it's, 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 I I take it personally. I work really, really hard for that, you know, (laughs) and then they want to say, well, I can get it, you know, for 50 cents a pound at the discount store. And I'm thinking, you know, it's not the same thing. (laughs) So, so have at it. I'll keep my tomatoes. You go ahead and eat garbage. But, um, so, you know, Going to Midwest Permaculture, um, it was, uh, boy, I I have to say, like, after after going there and everything that I saw and everything I learned, um, boy, I feel like sometimes I don't know anything and I'm I'm just overwhelmed, you know. I'm like, holy cow, you know, it's it's opened my eyes to so many aspects of things that. I think it's uh, what they call it analysis paralysis, you know, I'm like, I'm overthinking things and afraid to take steps. I've done a lot. I have done a lot since coming back. I've implemented a lot of the things and I do refer back to it quite often. Some of the maps and some of the things that I put together while there, Mm. uh, you know, I use that as my reference point a lot of times just to kind of get me back to where I know I want to be. Sometimes you kind of stray in different directions and I got to come back and say, all right, this is what I want to do. Um, you know, where, to kind of go ahead. Where are you located and, and where, where did you took the stealth course? I took the stealth course. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, in, uh, it was February and it was free. Yeah. <laughs> I know so, those courses. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and I live in just outside of Cleveland, Southeast okay. Cleveland, the 
about I'm about 20 minutes out of downtown. Um, it's pretty unique um, to have, first of all, to have 12 acres that close to the city is pretty unique. Um, and then where I have it, I, I butt up against uh, National Park and Metro Park. Mm. So I've got a lot of uh, public lands all around me, um, which is really nice. Uh, excuse me. I mean, it's nice in some aspects, not so nice in others. Um, you know, I get to use that land, but, um, you know, deer go unchecked. They're, they are protected. And so mm. deer are a major hurdle for me. I mean, I'm constantly trying to find ways to keep them away. Mm. <laughs> you know? um, and being that they can't be hunted, um, there's just too many. You know, there's way too many where I live. So um, it's one of those things. But um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just outside of Cleveland. Um, and um, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I lost track of thought. No, that's all right. I totally interrupted you. That's all um, right. Uh, yeah, we have in here in, in Michigan, in Ann Arbor, we have a deer cull. Okay. So we have sharpshooters in the uh, in the parks, and they right. close down the park, and they'll they'll try to 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 take some out. And then we have protesters that will try to prevent that. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun fun game. Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 we have one of those in my town, and well, and they do call. They, the, the net, they have started to do a calling. I don't think it's enough, but they're doing mm. something. But we have one lady in the village that she's against it, and yeah. Yeah. she actually wrote in the road. The previous owner of my property, he got a nuisance permit, and um, she wrote "killer" with red paint in the road, and it was just like, you know, lady if you love these deer so much, I want you out here. I want you as the crossing guard for the deer because they're walking right across the street. They're getting hit all the time. Oh yeah. I saw just the other day a deer got hit by a car and you know, is that any better than getting shot or how about starving? You know, is that better? I'd rather, yeah. kill it. but, um, yeah, they're just, they're, they're, you know, at least I, I think they're cute too, but they're really destructive. And, uh, and you know, and we, I don't know, did you guys have that chronic wasting disease? Do you have that in Michigan? Yeah. Yeah. It's up. It's around. I mean, I, I don't, I don't do any hunting, so I just don't know right details about it, but the, I think deer have to get checked uh, when you, when you har harvest one. Right. I would imagine, I don't know if I'd want to eat one that had a chronic wasting disease, no. <laughs> but um so, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that is definitely a bit of a challenge is, you know, having those deer around. I mean, they, they get into my orchard, they rub the heck out of my trees and, uh, uh, nothing makes me more angry than when, I mean, I even, you know, eat my tomatoes, whatever, but you know, the things that take so long, to yeah. produce, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, we had the cicadas. Mm -hmm. It was the year after I planted all my trees, the 17 year cicadas came out. And I was just like, what bad timing. It was horrible timing. They did a lot of damage to them. Mm -hmm. I tried wrapping them and I put my chickens actually in the orchard. Oh, um, yeah. You that know, wasn't enough? It still wasn't enough. I mean, they still did damage. But they, I mean, they, they, they took a, a pretty good chunk of the cicadas out of there. I mean, they, I, I, they were jumping, you know, jumping into the tree, and <laughs> snatch them out. You know, it was fun. Oh, that sounds, he was running sounds across, great. trying to chase them, catch them, you know. But, um, you know, you do what you can to try to prevent. And, um, you know, uh, actually where I live, it was just recently I'm allowed to have chickens. I had to fight, mm -hmm. argue uh, for over a year. And um, actually another one of a uh, of, uh, PDC graduate that was with in my class, she lives half a mile down the road from me. And she's, you know, joined the fight to try to, she actually started it. And then, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a bull. So I, I don't take no for an answer. And, and uh, so we, we made it happen, but um, they allowed us six chickens per acre with a maximum of six chickens. <laughs> You know, and it was just like, come on, that's ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. I mean, in in the city of Cleveland, you can have six chickens um, on a forty by one hundred lot. You right. know, so this is what they came up with, and and it makes it difficult. I'm not allowed to have any other kind of animals, um, hmm. so it really makes it difficult to you know 
complete what I want to do without those animals. Um, you know, I'd like to get some goats. I'd like to maybe get a few pigs. Um, but I just, uh, you know, we'll see. It'll take some time. You know, I got to pick my battles and, and yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> so we'll see. And I know I'm not going to win right now. I got to change who's in office. There, <laughs> do, do you see, so uh, you live in a different place. No, you I bought, live. I live on the property. Oh, you did? Did it have a house on it then? There's a house there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's great. I mean, really, it was such an. It was. It was a really unique opportunity. I was working next door, um, at my friend's house. He told me, you know, just come to my place. We'll work on my place. And so we expanded his garden. Um, then, the the gentleman next door had already passed, and mm. my, the guy I was working with knew the family very well. And, um, he basically talked them into selling it to me. They wanted to keep it preserved. They didn't mm -hmm. want it to be developed. Um, you know, so we met and I told her what I wanted to do and it was in line with what she wanted done. And so mm -hmm. I never went on the market and she had people like hounding her to sell it to them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And she didn't even listen to a number. She didn't even take an offer from anybody. She sat down with me. We negotiated a price. And uh, I think it was fair. You know, the first number she threw out, I was like, wait a minute. If you want me to preserve this property, I can't pay that much. You know, right. I'll yeah. never see that much out of it. So you have to bring it down to what you want out of this property as well. So uh, I, th I think we came to a fair price. And um you know, and, and so now the work begins, you know, and that was four years ago. Uh, so four years ago, and I don't remember, was it three years ago? I don't even remember which course I took. Um, mm. I know it was in February. I think it was, uh, what would it be, uh, 16, 2016, I believe is when I took it. But okay. um, I look it up. Uh, so um, it's been a little while and it's definitely changed the course of direction that I had going for the farm. You know, I, yeah, what, what, that's one of my questions is what, how, how did the PDC change, you know, uh, change the direction that you were headed in? Well, um, you know, like I said, I, I was, I was doing tomatoes, peppers, eggplants. We were doing a lot of green, just a lot of annuals. We were doing mm -hmm. a lot of annuals. Um, trying to take to market, you know, that's what we were doing, trying to sell it at market. And, um, it's a ton of work and you have to do that same work every single year. And there's just not really much in it as far as financially, it's not worth it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I found that it's just not worth it. So, um, after taking the course, you know, I really started looking at my long-term goals. I wasn't looking at, you know, let's grow some tomatoes and peppers and try to make some money this year. It's more along the lines of what can I get established in here that will continue to produce. Um, looking at different projects um, and how to implement them, uh, I think it really made a big difference in uh, helping me to understand kind of the, the, the progression um, that I need to hmm. be successful long term, you know, um, and just trying to figure out what it is I want to put in there, what kind of crops I want to put in there. Um, I got a lot of ideas as far as different types of plants, trees, what they do, their, you know, how they benefit properties, um, mm -hmm. and um, that was, I'd say you know, the biggest change for me was looking more at perennial long-term crops, um, how to set up the property with water, water flow, um, you know, trying to redirect, because I do have a lot of water that comes onto my property. Um, mm -hmm. So I've been working on trying to um, keep that water on my property as long as possible, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, whole so, different perspective. Yes, yeah, you know, um, it used to be I looked at drainage. Okay, we need to get this excess water, move it out, and get yeah. it out of here. Um, now I'm looking at, well, how can I move it from where I don't want it, but keep it in another area where yeah. I can use it for later, or even just, just creating that drought resistance in certain areas. 
um, you know, that has been a big thing for me. It opened my eyes to that quite a bit, um, you know, and seeing and seeing, you know, that there's some erosion going on in my property, you know, in this one area. And I'm working to address that. Um, fortunately, where I live, um, they know everything that you do and you, you have to have permits for anything you do. So, <laughs> um, so I'm working on a pond right now and uh, just the planning is going to cost a lot more than I anticipated um, yeah. having to get surveys and engineers and all these things to, to dig upon. Um, but it's in the works and I'm really, that's, it's the key because I need to move a lot of soil, all that soil we're going to be removing from the pond area. We're going to be moving to other areas of the property mm -hmm. and I can't plant my trees until that soil is moved. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, I plant it and then I'll yeah. be burying my trees, you know? So the pond really is holding up a lot of what I want to do because of that soil movement that I'm going to have and redistributing it. So hopefully this summer the pond will be in, and then I can move forward with my trees and uh, wildflower fields and things of that sort, just my long-term plans. Mm. So, um, yeah, that's, I think, probably answers that question. Cool. Um, yeah, the, the PDC is uh, pretty broad in terms of uh, what, it, what it covers. Mm -hmm. um, did you do you think that there was enough like practical how-to kind of stuff in there um well i honestly don't know how much more you could pack into that uh that time uh you know it really there was so much information and so much time spent there uh learning um I suppose, I suppose, you it's know, okay, you don't have been, to bite on any of these questions. That's okay. Well, it would have been nice. I mean, it would be nice, you know, but I don't think that there was enough time really I, to cover it's, in that detail. You know, I well, learned on. And but, there's, there's the context, like you're, you're learning, like you switch an entire context of like, Oh wait, this, this is the ecological context that we actually live in. Right. And then you wake up to that and you're like, okay, you get, I mean, you, you got to get that kind of under, you know, contained, whatever within the course. And then, and then the other stuff's just extra, but it contributes to that, right? Or it leads from that, yeah. maybe even. I think that base knowledge will, you know, you can find the information's out there. You yeah. know, the information is out there and, and how to maybe carry out some of the things that you learned in the PDC. Um, I, I just, you know, I don't think that there was, I mean, we, we learned so much and yeah, I don't know how other classes are, but our class was a really great class. I think we had a good amount of, uh, experience in different areas, mm -hmm. um, where the contribution from the classmates, I learned a ton, you know, and still do from being in contact with them yeah. or from them. Um, but we really did have a lot of input. Um, we had one girl who was really into bugs um, and she's a naturalist for the Metro parks. And so she mm -hmm. knows so much about bugs and, um, you know, drawing beneficial bugs and all the different things that they do. Uh, we had a guy who worked for the botanical gardens and he knew so much about uh, plants. And um, so yeah, there was, there was just a lot of experience there on top of Bill and Becky and, um, it was, it was great. It really was a great experience. And Stell was, was such an interesting place as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's a unique place. You go in there. The, the first day that we were there, there was a funeral. And so mm -hmm. the other half of the building, they, they had the funeral and it, you know, it was our first day there. And, uh, you know, Bill and Becky, you know, they just, they kept us on course. Uh, they didn't, you know, uh, deviated all for the funeral, but, uh, we did get to meet a lot of people that night cause there was a whole bunch of people there. And, uh, it was just such a unique place. Um, how everything works there and, and, you know, going and staying with a family, uh, they have no idea who you are. Uh, yeah. and they were very welcoming and, and it was, it was, you know, they, they made it very comfortable. Mm. Um, so it was the, the whole experience, I would say, 
was um, was pretty unique. You know, I think we actually developed a pretty strong bond amongst our classmates. You know, just spending all that time, yeah. uh, you know, and learning so much together. Um, and we really did spend a ton of time together. <laughs> you know, it was a lot of time in seven days. So it, it's intense. That's, yeah. that's for sure. Yes. <clears throat> um. So, so some of the the general projects, like you've uh, you, you you bought this property, you have a a pond. Has it changed how you, how you work your business? Uh, anything about your business at all, or or how you think about things? Uh you know, I I wouldn't say that it's changed my business so mm. much. Um. I, I really would like to get out of my business and uh, <laughs> well, it's, a, it's a it's a pretty specific thing right like growing very, indoors and yes it's very specific yeah, and, yeah. you know um, I actually last year um, really didn't do much on my property as far as any kind of plantings mm -hmm. uh, I brought somebody else in to grow the tomatoes and all the other things that she wants she grew whatever she wanted I basically said I don't have the time for this this year it's yours to do what you want with. And mm. so, and it was nice just to have somebody there to help maintain, you know, one year without doing anything in a field or your garden, you're going to have a mess, you know? Yeah, totally. So it was nice just to have somebody that was there taking care of it. Um, but we were actually trying to get a license to grow medical marijuana. Okay. And, uh, so that's what I was putting a lot of my effort towards was trying to get one of those licenses um didn't work out but um you know i don't know i kind of want i just think i want to get out of this business i don't really care for it too much mm -hmm. um it uh retail is not easy when you're dealing with amazon and and oh yeah you know there there is a huge fight to make less money people want to fight to make less money and i don't want to participate in that fight you know I want out. I, I give, I give you win that fight, you know? And, um, it's frustrating because I do teach my customers a lot when they come in, I teach them so much. Um, and so when I get people that come in and they, they want me to match Amazon's price, I said, well, that's, that's fine, but you can go ahead and, uh, go ahead and, uh, see if Amazon can help you out. Go ahead, buy on Amazon and see if they can tell you how to use that equipment. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be sitting in the corner of your room not yeah. being used because you didn't know what to do with it. How good of a deal will it be then? You know? So, um, so I stick to my guns. I keep my prices to where I can try to make a living mm -hmm. and I'm happy to help my customers. If I know they're loyal and I know they're spending money with me, they'll be successful because I'll make sure of that. But, um, I would really much rather be on my property and I'm trying to figure that out. How can I make that happen? You know, I do have a very unique place in that um, there's a bike path that goes right next to my, it goes mm. right across the, I'm on a corner lot and it goes right next to my property. People ride by on their bikes all the time. We have mountain bike trails, we have paved trails, we have horse trails, um, you know, and so there's a lot of people coming to enjoy the outdoors and enjoy the beautiful scenery. Um I got to figure out a way that I can capitalize on that somehow. And so that I can spend my time on my property because it's really where I want to be. Yeah. Uh, that's where I enjoy myself most is when I'm there. So, um, so, you know, I don't know how that, um, I don't know how that will happen, but I know it's there. You know, I was actually looking at, um, some of my old PDC stuff a couple weeks ago and, uh, what is it? Uh, there's a chart. Something about inventory. There's different types of inventory or assets or something. And uh, the, the, uh, yeah, different types of ass living assets. Right. Uh, is it the eight forms of capital? Maybe. That's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Is. Yes. And yeah. so you know, and I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, you know, I have these parks across the street, and I think that having my property right there, you know, that is an asset there you know mm -hmm. i just have to figure out how to work it into what i want to do um at the same time i don't really want a lot of people <laughs> i don't really like a lot of people around 
balance, I, right? I want to pick who I want around. Like, you know, people are like, why don't you do weddings? And I'm like, yeah, but then I got a bunch of drunk idiots running around my property and damaging my stuff, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, you know? <laughs> So, you know, I don't want that. I, I want to limit the amount of people. I want it to be good people, people that have the same ideas and, and, and value what it is that I'm trying to do. Those are the people I'm trying to draw into my property and mm-hmm. work with me to make something happen there, you know. So um, that, uh, that speaks to the, the social permaculture, essentially. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yes. And have you, is it, uh, still in early cultivation, your social permaculture, or, or yeah. have you? Yeah, yeah, okay. It's very early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fair. That's, that's fair. That it's, is, a, it's my least. Uh, it's it's not my strong suit. You know, mm-hmm. it's not my strong suit. Well, uh, culturally, we're bad at it too, mm-hmm. right? right? So then, then if you're not good at it, and we're cultural, it's it's just it's hard. It is hard. You know, I mean, I, you know, I brought the, like I said, I brought that girl in on my property this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And really yeah, yeah. nice girl. You know, I didn't, she didn't do things the way that I would have done them. Of course. Uh, and, and, you know, not that everything I do is, is perfect and right. But um, there were, t- there were times where I just got so frustrated, you know, like I see, I, I, I saw her doing things why is she doing that? And I just got so frustrated with her, but I, you know, I, I just stayed away from it. You know, if, yeah. it was, if it was my project and I saw her, you know, I would, I would address it. And there were times that I would tell her, listen, you know, once you do this, before you do that, you're kind of, you're screwing things up. You're doing it wrong and, and it's not going to work out for you. And I yeah. can't remember a specific thing, but uh, it's I'm, not not the most patient person. I'm not the most patient person, you know, and I'm not a good teacher. I'll be, I'm the one, who will like try to teach you and then just do it because I just want to get it done. And I don't <laughs> want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I need to get better at that. You know, I do, I need to get better. I need to, you know, learn that taking that time to teach. It's an stuff. edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so good. that's one thing I definitely need to work on. Um, and you know, it's hard to balance the career and the property. Because the property alone is a ton of work. It's um, a career in and of itself that it doesn't necessarily <laughs> support you. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I mean, long term, I, I do hope it yeah, will. Yeah. About the fact that if, if I didn't have to go to the grocery store to buy all that food, how much money would I save monthly? It'd be a ton. You know, it'd be a lot of money. And and then just yeah. like, better, you know, it's more healthy and so, um, so there is value in it, no doubt about it, but it does take some time to, to start getting that value, especially when you're talking about perennials, you know, yeah, that's right. Terms. So yeah, are slow, yeah, slow to, to, to yield their investment. Right. You know, yeah. I don't hear you anymore. Are you muted? Hey, I tell you what, we're at time, plenty to go on. Let's uh, let's call it. The, the technology has ended the meeting for us. All right, but, but thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, I'll let you know uh, what craziness I come up with. All right, so have a good day. All right, bye.